Okay, these are examples of some of the polymer sculpted pins that my sixth graders created. And they had to come up with a theme for their project. Uh, it was totally their choice what they wanted to work with, but they had to put clay around the body of a pen and they had to create a base to hold their pen. Um, and I didn't care what their themes were. Uh, we talk about personal interests, we talk about um, functional art and how the art has another purpose beyond just being nice to look at. Um, some were designed as gifts, so they chose themes uh, that the person receiving the gift would want, and some just went with their favorite items um, for inspiration for their project. So I can't take credit for this project. I saw the idea on the internet and um, I'm limited to polymer clay this year. So I've just been searching different ways that I could teach with polymer. Um, so these are kind of the basic supplies that I provide my students to work with polymer. Um, from all the tutorials that I read online, this is the type of pen that you're gonna want to work with where it has kind of like this thicker cased plastic that is coated, it's not a clear see-through plastic. So this type of pin would not work. Obviously there's rubber on it, that's gonna melt in the oven because you have to bake these in the oven. This type of clear pin apparently melts in the oven as well. Um, so I just bought packs of these at the Dollar Tree um, and they work just fine. So what I did before I gave them to the students was I removed the ink inside of it because you cannot bake it with the ink inside. And then um, the first step is that you have to coat your pen with polymer. Um, you have to bake the polymer at 275, 15 minutes per quarter of an inch, I think it is. Um, so because this is going around the base of a pen, it doesn't need to be thick at all. Um, so that's where I start with my student. So another thing, if you did not know this, um, polymer is corrosive. Um, so it's gonna eat through certain surfaces. So this is how I had my students work with polymer. I had these uh, cardboard trays donated to my class a few years ago. Um, but polymer will start to eat through the cardboard. You'll see it's gonna leave like a grease stain and if it sits on there long enough, it can just disintegrate through the cardboard. Um, but it can't eat through the tin foil. So I just tore out a sheet of tin foil for every student. They used a Sharpie marker and they wrote their name and class period on that tin foil. And then as they were making the project, um, their clay sat on top of the tin foil and that's how we could transport and store things and then when it came time to paint the project same thing they just still left it on top of the tin foil um, other artists have put their polymer on top of ceramic tiles as a work um, source uh, but it will eat through plastic so I accidentally left some polymer on a plastic tray for a couple of weeks and when I found it it was like it had been hot glued to that um, plastic surface and it bonded almost like um, it had been super glued to it and I hadn't baked it yet and it literally just glued itself to that plastic surface so just be aware of that if you did not already know that about polymer okay um, I got these ideas from other teachers or other artists. Um, this artist just tapes together playing cards and then um, you can add layers to your cards to change the thickness. So I wrote the number two on these because these are two playing cards thick and I just cut the card in half so there's one on each side. We just use a Crayola marker as our rolling pin um, and I teach the students that they have to squish the clay to get it soft to begin with and I only bought white clay so that they could paint it to be whatever color they want. Um, I tell them to squeeze it four or five times. I say as soon as you can squeeze it in one hand and you can leave fingerprints, you're done. You don't want to make this too soft because polymer um, gets really stretchy like gum and then it's very difficult to work with. So um, I had the kids roll their clay first into a big worm and then they stuck that between their two playing cards. They got their marker and they rolled this out. Um, then once it is the thickness of the playing cards, and you kind of have to move your cards as you roll because I explained that the cards have to be under your marker at all times 
otherwise your clay is going to get too thin. And you kind of have to roll it a diagonal to stretch the width of your clay. Okay. Then um, another tool that a previous art teacher purchased um, that's just been sitting in my cabinet is this like metal rib tool. Um, it works really well to lift the clay off the tables and to cut the clay in straight lines. However, it's super sharp. So I put duct tape on one edge so the kids could cut with this and hopefully not cut their fingers, but they could cut their fingers on this side if they're not being careful. Um, so I just teach them, you just kind of shimmy it underneath your clay to lift it up off of the table. Then what you do is you put your pen next to your clay and I have them cut it to be the length of the white part of the pen. And then you're going to stick the pen on top of the clay and you're going to roll it up from one side and press it down to get it stuck and then you just keep rolling it. And then they roll this back and forth to wrap the clay around um, that can help flatten out the clay in the process and then these empty spots where the clay didn't cover the pen you can just take your little scraps and wrap that around I don't know. and I even have them cover the back end of the pen the black side of the pen um, so if they don't roll it tight enough, there's going to be air pockets and then the clay is just going to kind of um, get air pockets in it. So I just remind them to roll it tight. So I also tell them not to cover the end of that piece because that's where your ink has to go. So that's the beginning of um, building the body of the pen. From there, they um, start shaping the 3D items that are going to go around the pen, so I had them make the pen first. Um, I just kind of teach them the methods of pinch coil slab to work with. Okay, so some of the other tools that uh, my students have, I just use shish kebab skewers that I've broken down and put tape on the jaggedy edge. Um, I bought some modeling tools and then I have a variety of popsicle sticks. So um, I taped two popsicle sticks together to create the widest um, set that you can roll your clay out. So if they're rolling clay flat, I say either use single popsicle sticks for a medium height the double popsicle sticks or the playing cards and that gives you three varieties of rolling out flat clay. Um, then when they make the base I just tell them to start with a handful of clay they get it soft and then their base should tie into their theme so I just tell them if they want to keep it simple just start with a mound of clay to begin with and then add the detail things around it. Um, so what they can do is take their pen and push it into the clay and I tell them to kind of wiggle it around a little bit. Um, then their clay is going to get filled into the base of their pen so they can use this popsicle stick skewer and just kind of push the clay down. It doesn't matter if the pen if the clay stays in there, that's not going to hurt anything, but this has to be open so that the ink can come in. Um, this whole black thing will actually come out if you need to, and then you can dig the rest of the clay out of there. Um, so my one mistake the first time I made my sample was that um, we just ended it with this. Well, I completely forgot that the inkwell is going to give you about another quarter of an inch in height. So when you stick your ink back, so once you bake it, then you put the ink back in. And then that is probably going to change the balance of the pen. So you have to account that that much more of your pen is going to be in the height once your ink is in there. Um, so you could... Um, attach clay like around the top edge where you could roll a coil and just kind of build up this top edge to make it higher. You could smear and smudge that to make it kind of blend more seamlessly. So now when I stick my pen in, um, it's going to help stabilize that. So I would even still go even taller than that. And I had to walk the kids through this process because I didn't finish my teacher sample before I had the kids actually do this. And then I found this problem after we started painting. So some kids just had to add clay and then uh, I had to bake it again and paint around it. But that's kind of an example of how 
you really do need to build up the height of your base to account for once the ink is in there. Um, but yeah, thicker projects um, like this base, that one I baked for 30 minutes at a time. Um, so anything that's kind of over a quarter of an inch thick, I left in the oven for 30 minutes. Everything else just kind of got a 15 to 20 minute time frame. And some of the clay will bake and like turn brown, but I didn't care because they painted these anyways and you couldn't tell. Um, so that's kind of how I um, set up this project. Another thing that I did find helpful was this loop tool. I didn't have enough for every kid, so before I would bake their clay, I made them test their pen, and if the pen um, didn't sit in deep enough, I would take this loop tool and just kind of twist it to open up that hole a little bit bigger. Um, but yeah, I hope that helps. Okay, the last tip, um, if you did not know this, Polymer is really awesome to work with because you don't have to do anything fancy to attach clay. It's not like um, kiln fire clay where you have to score and slip pieces together. It's sticky as is and you just stick it together and you just kind of smear and smudge and shape it. That's all you have to do. Um, but polymer, when there's contact to it and you bake it, it is going to fuse together. So you cannot bake your pens um, in the base. Those have to be separate to bake them. And then, um, like I said in my video, I had to add clay to my base to account for the ink that got attached to it. Well, I had already painted my base red when I discovered, I actually painted the entire thing. I put the pen in and went, oh no, it's no longer balanced because it's that much taller. So I did some research to figure out can I even bake acrylic paint? And yes, you can bake acrylic paint. It's not gonna hurt the paint, it does nothing to the paint, and it actually will kind of give it a little bit of a glossy surface. So um, I literally had to attach clay to build up this base, and I just stuck new clay on there, and then I put that in the oven to make my base taller, and then we just painted over it again. So. Um, just wanted to let you know that yes, you can bake acrylic paint if you are in the same situation that I was in.